regardless of how much effort, as long as you do something for La ilaha illallah. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, always used to, you know, value the people who, who, who left the legacy, people who do something. As long as you do something, akhi, don't stand still. You do something, you move, make some efforts. You know, the Prophet one time, he noticed a woman, an old woman. The only thing she used to do is clean the mosque. An old woman. She's like poor old woman. What does she used to do? She used to clean the mosque. One day he noticed that she was not there. So the Prophet asked, where is that old woman? They said, oh Prophet of Allah, she died last night. She died last night. Why didn't you wake me up? So I can pray on her. The Prophet says, you were sleeping. We did not want to disturb you. As if they're telling him, oh, that's what Allah, she's like, she's like an old, you know, she's nobody. Why should we wake you up to pray? She's like nobody, you know, a poor old woman, poor, you know, cleaning the mosque. You know, we will wait until tomorrow when you ever really wake up. The Prophet says, no, you should have woke me up. Show me where her grave is. Tell me what her grave is. And they showed him where her grave is. This is the title of the lecture. Show me where her grave is. Do you know what her grave is? The Luni ala qabriha. And they showed him her grave and he went and he performed the salah on her. It's a woman, an old woman, miskina, poor. Yet she left a legacy. She did something. As you know, my daughter, she used to tell me, Dad, DSS. Say, what's DSS? This is some new. One direction thingy. You know, all is one D. You know. One direction is la ilaha illallah. What are you talking about? One direction. I said, Dad, don't you know what DSS means? I, said, I don't know what DSS. What's DSS? She says, DSS. DSS. You know? I said, what's DSS? Don't stand still. So that's salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Yalla, 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 I need to hear some noise. Salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah. Are there any Moroccans in the house? No, they're not enough. How about the Somalis? There you go, mashallah. It's Kowan. What's Kowan, yes sir? Are there any Pakistanis in town? There you go. Any Norwegians? You're dead, man. <laughs> Mashallah. Any Danish? No. Any Muslims in the house? Alhamdulillah. Mashallah. Assalamu alaikum wa ta'ala wa barakatuh. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant you all the firdaws al-a'la. Say ameen. I've been traveling around asking where's her grave where is her grave you know my brothers and sisters that the prophet muhammad alayhi salatu was was sent out to all mankind ya ayyuhan nas inni rasulullah ilaykum jami'a Oh, you people, Ayyuhannas, I am the messenger of God being sent to you all. So the Prophet Muhammad والسلام, was sent to all mankind, Arabs and non-Arabs. And let me give you an idea as to what type of people the Prophet Muhammad had to deal with. So I can connect it with the topic that we're going to be talking about today. 
The Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam was sent to people who used to worship stones, rocks, um, animals, sun, moon, trees. It's been narrated by a man known as Abu Raja al-Ataridi. Abu Raja al-Ataridi, he said, We were traveling and we used to take our gods with us. Listen to this. We were traveling and we used to take our gods with us. And the gods were made of rocks, you know, idols. And then we were cooking our food in this big pot. And, and we were looking for a rock because we needed to put this pot into. And we had to put like, a, you know, some rocks as a base. And then put the, the pot on top of a rock. So we needed, we were missing one rock. And we were looking for some rocks. We could not find a good one. So he says that we brought our God that they were carrying with them. So we brought our God and we put it under the pot to hold the pot where they were cooking their food. They cooked their food, they ate their food, and then when they were done, you know, they left. On the way, one of them says, Oh, you people, we have forgotten our God. We have forgotten our God. Let's go back and look for it. They went back looking for their God, meaning that rock that they took with them. They were looking for some rock, their God. They could not find that particular rock that they had put in under the pot. So they, they, they looked for some other rocks. They picked one. They, they poured some milk in it. They cleaned it and they said, okay, this is our new God. This is the type of people that the prophet was sent to. This kind of people. People who, you know, this is what it's called the day of ignorance. The prophet had to deal with this type of mentality. People worshipping rocks. People worshipping stones. People worshipping galaxies. People worshipping stars. People worshipping uh, uh, sun and the moon and trees and monkeys and donkeys. And drink and and worshiping the and drinking the urine of monkeys and donkeys. Yet Islam was on the move. Islam was on the move, despite all the oppression that the companions were going through. Islam was on the move. Islam was growing. The the Sahaba, the companions, they went through a lot of oppression. They went through a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, hardship. You see, Islam came to us so easy. How many new Muslims or how many revert Muslims do we have in the house? Revert Muslims. MashaAllah, they're quite few. Did anybody, you know, uh, once you embrace Islam, anybody put a, I'm talking to you, Akhi, you know, did anybody put a gun says, you know, revert, go back to whatever you were before? Oh, we're going to slaughter you. We're going to hit you. We're going. Did anybody do that to you? You know, uh, there's a man by the name of Al Khabab. Al Khabab al Arath is a companion. So they're sitting with some companions and with Omar talking about, you know, who was really punished the more, who was tortured the more or the most. Bilal says, Me, of course. Bilal said, Me. You know, they used to put, you know, rocks on, on, on my chest and they were torturing me to leave my religion. And I did not leave my religion. al Khabab says, no, Ya Bilal, it is not you. And he showed him his back. And, and when Umar saw the back of al Khabab Nul Arath, Umar fainted. al Khabab had holes in his back. They used to bring charcoal, my brothers and sisters. They used to bring hot charcoal and they would put his back on the charcoal, the hot charcoal, they would press his back against it. So just he would, you know, leave his religion, yet he did not leave his religion. People, they suffered to say La ilaha illallah and to stay with La ilaha illallah. Umayyah, ibn Khalaf, was torturing Sumayya and her husband and her, and her son. Umar 
was also torturing. You know, before Islam, he used to torture his maid. They went through a lot of torture, my brothers and sisters. They went through a lot of suffering just to keep their faith, just to hold on their faith. Yet, subhanallah, once they enter into the fold of Islam, they would understand their role and they would understand their obligation. They understood their mission. As soon as they say, La ilaha illallah, anybody who comes and say, La ilaha illallah, they understood right away their commitment. It is reported, listen to this amazing story. The Prophet sent the man as a messenger, you know, to convey Islam. He sent him to a town near between At-Ta'if and Mecca. From Medina, it's about 700 kilometers. So he went for about 700 kilometers from Medina to Mecca. There were no planes, there were no cars, there were no, 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 no motorcycles. There were, it was only, they were, you know, either on foot or using camels. This guy walked and rode for 700 kilometers just so that he can convey the message to this little town. It's called Wadi Nu'man, the Valley of Nu'man. Yet nobody believed in him. And then he made a U-turn and he went back to Medina. The leader of that town, Wadi Nu'man, he thought to himself, he says, you know what? I'm going to travel to Medina myself to hear it from Muhammad himself. I want to talk to Muhammad. Maybe he's right. So let me go back and travel and hear it from him. So he traveled 700 kilometers all the way to Medina. And listen to this amazing story. He entered Medina. You know the Arabs? Who are the Arabs here? Hey, Arabs. Nobody. I can hardly see you, man. Arabs? None. Only a few. Arabs, you know, the Bedouins, they're kind of rush, harsh, you know, Bedouin. So this guy goes into Medina and he goes, Ayn Abdul Abdul Muttalib! Ayn Abdul Abdul Muttalib! Where is the son of Abdul Muttalib? The people look at him and say, take it easy, man. I mean, they didn't say, take it easy, man, you know. You don't think it's funny, huh? Okay, fine. Ayn Abdul Abdul Muttalib! Where is Abdul Muttalib? They said, he is in the masjid. So he goes inside the masjid. Ayn ibn Abdul Muttalib. Where is... Yani he's asking about Muhammad. Hey, where is the son of Abdul Muttalib? They said he is there. By the post. And the prophet says, Ha um. I'm here. Ha um. So he goes to him. Ayn ibn Abdul Muttalib. The prophet says, I am Abdul Muttalib. The man says, Inni sa'iluk. Wa mushaddidun alayka su'al. Fala tajid fi qalbik. He says, I'm going to ask you some questions and I'm going to be very harsh. So do not take it personal. Yani, he's saying, I don't know, please. I don't know, thank you. I don't know, you know, you know. I am just going to be very rude, asking you straight questions. So don't take it personally. The prophet says, ask. So the man says, Ya Muhammad, oh Muhammad, man rafa as sama." Who created the, the heavens? The Prophet said, Allah. Oh Muhammad, وَمَنْ نَصَبَ الْجِبَالِ And who created the mountains? The Prophet said, Allah. Oh Muhammad, and who created the earth? The Prophet says, Allah. The man says, I ask you by the one who created the heavens, the mountains, and the earth. Has Allah sent you to us as a messenger? The Prophet says, Allahumma na'am. Yes. I ask you by the one who created the heavens, the earth, and the mountains. Has Allah asked you to ask us to pray five times a day? The Prophet says, yes, Allahumma na'am. Has, by, I'm asking you by the one who created the heavens, the earth, and the mountains. Has God, Allah, asked you to tell us to uh, uh, pay zakat? and to fast Ramadan, and to do the Hajj, the Prophet says, Allahumma na'am, yes. Then the man says, the man says, 
I am the leader. Delar. My name is Delar. I am the leader of my tribe. And I'm here to witness that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah. And you are the messenger of Allah. If I believe in you and I believe in Allah, would I enter Jannah? The Prophet says, Allahumma na'am. Yes, Allahumma na'am. If you believe in me and you believe in, in, in Allah and you believe in me and you do these five things that I've asked you to do, yes, you shall enter Jannah. And the guy, as soon as the Prophet Muhammad told him yes, he ran out of the masjid. You know, they used to have this long hair. They called, you know, braids. You know, sisters, the thing, you know, they, they know what I'm talking about. They used to have in the day of ignorance, they used, the man used to have this long hair. So when he was walking, he was walking like this, you know, and the hair was like, you know. You know what? Let me tell you why, why this. Because the man rushed out of the masjid and his hair was moving like he was so, walking so fast and the hair was doing like this, right? So the prophet says, Sadaqa, Sadaqa, uh, uh, Sadaqa. You know, he says, he spoke the truth. He spoke the truth. Uh, uh, he forgot his name. Dilal. He says, uh, the guy with the two braids, he spoke the truth. Sadaq. He spoke the truth. If he does exactly as he, as, he, as he said he will do, he shall enter Jannah. This guy went back straight to his family. 700 kilometers. It may have taken him a month or two or what not. He went back. Listen to what happened. As soon as he comes in, his father was coming to him and he said to his father, Abi, ilayka anni. Dad, stay back. Stay back. Why, son? I am not from you. You're not from me. Why, oh son, why? He said, Muhammad. I have changed my religion and I'm following the religion of Muhammad. The father said, I will follow you, my son. I'll follow you. Then he says, go, take a bath, come back. I shall teach you Islam. And then the mom comes to him. And then he tells his mom, mom, ilayki anni. Mom, stay back. Why? i not from you. You're not from me. I changed my religion and I'm following the religion of Muhammad. And then the mom says, I'm with you, son. He says, go, take a shower. Come back. Let me teach you Islam. And then the wife comes in. I understand if the, you know, the father, you know, the mother, yes. But this guy has not seen his wife for maybe two or three months. And then she's coming in, right? Huh? Huh? Uh, 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 you know? <laughs> what does he say? Does he uh, break the rules? No. <laughs> Stay back. Why? Stay back. <laughs> You're not from me, I'm not from you. Why? What did I do, honey? Mary Jam. She wasn't Pakistani, we just say Marija. <laughs> what did I do? Why? Stay back. I'm not from you, not from me. Why, honey? Why? You know, not honey. He didn't say, she didn't say honey, but I'm saying. Uh, what, what? I'm not from you, not from me. I changed my religion. I follow the religion of Muhammad. She says, I will follow the religion of Muhammad. He says, go back, take a shower, come here. I shall teach you Islam. The narrator of the story, he says, by sunset, the entire town embraced Islam. They knew their responsibility. As soon as they said that commitment, that I have to live according to some rules, obey Allah, obey the Prophet, and convey the message of La ilaha illallah. They don't have to follow me. And I don't have to follow them. But I have a mission. I have a legacy that I have to leave behind me. I have to convey the message. And my brothers and sisters, it, regardless of how much effort, as long as you do something for La ilaha illallah, the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, always used to, you know, value the people who, who, who left a legacy, people who do something. As long as you do something, akhi, don't stand still. You do something, you move, make some efforts. You know, the Prophet one time, he noticed a woman, an old woman, the only thing she used to do is clean the mosque. An old woman. She's like poor old woman. What does she used to do? She used to clean the mosque. One day he noticed that she was not there. So the prophet asked, where is that old woman? They said, oh prophet of Allah, she died last night. She died last night. Why didn't you wake me up? So I can pray on her 
the prophet says you were sleeping we did not want to disturb you as if they're telling him oh that's what she's like she's like an old you know she's nobody why should we wake you up to pray she's like nobody you know a poor old woman poor you know cleaning the mosque you know we will wait until tomorrow when you ever you wake up the prophet says no you should have woke me up show me where her grave is tell me what her grave is and they showed him where her grave is this is the title of the lecture show me where her grave is you know what her grave is and they showed him her grave and he went and he performed the salah on her it's a woman, an old woman, miskina, poor. Yet, she left a legacy. She did something. As You know my daughter, she used to tell me, Dad, DSS. Say, what's DSS? Is this some new One Direction thingy? <laughs> you know, all is 1D. You know? One Direction is la ilaha illallah. What are you talking about? One Direction. I said, Dad, don't you know what DSS means? I, said, I don't know what DSS. What's DSS? She says, DSS, DSS, you know? I says, what's DSS? Don't stand still. Don't stand still. Yeah, and he does just don't do, you know, move. Do something for Allah. Do something for La ilaha illallah. You cannot just go and pray and then, you know, there are a lot of people, your neighbors, your friends, people dying without La ilaha illallah. When I was in San Francisco, one guy came to the mosque, a Caucasian white guy, blue eye. He came to the mosque and he told us, my father, he said to the masjid, you know, my father died yesterday. You people, none of you has ever come to our house or oh, came and knocked at us and, and we're the neighbor of your mosque. Nobody has ever come to tell us about Islam. Yesterday, my father died. I will hold you responsible before Allah for not coming and telling us about Islam. We live in the masjid. We stay in the masjid. Yes, our neighbors also, you know, we never thought of going around and telling people about this amazing, beautiful religion. And alhamdulillah, this is the purpose of the peace conference. Not only to bring people out together, but to go out with a mission. We live in the West. There are certain rules that we have to abide by, yes. But also people, they have to know that, you know, what is Islam? Islam is not what they hear from the TV, akhi. They hear about Islam and Muslims, you know, extremism and whatnot. That is not Islam. We need to tell them what Islam is all about. Do you know, my brothers and sisters, that the majority of the mosques in North America, Canada, and the U.S., the majority of the mosques, they used to be churches. The majority of the mosques in North America, they used to be churches. Churches are going out of business. A lot of churches are going out of business. And they turn into a masjid. Have you ever seen a masjid shut down? Anybody? A mosque shut down because, uh, well, you know what? Nobody comes to our mosque, so, you know, we're running out of business. We, are, we just, you know, we shut it down. Have you ever heard that? What happens when you build a masjid? We buy some building and we call it a masjid, right? And then six months later, a year later, what do we do? Tell me. What do we do? Raise funds. Why? Why do we need to raise funds? We need to expand. We need to expand. We don't close down. We expand, subhanAllah. You know, there's this guy. He saw a dream. He built a masjid. He built a mosque. And he put some rules. He says, he says, I don't want nobody to help me build this mosque. So he wants to build the mosque with his own wealth, with his own money. So he saw a dream. He saw a dream that this mosque that he's built, because he put the name of the mosque, you know, he put his name. He put a big sign, his name, as this is the name, this is the name, you know, the masjid after my name. And then he saw in his dream an angel coming down, taking that sign out and putting another sign of some woman, you know, the name of a woman. The guy wakes up in the morning. Hey, go check, you know, what name is there? They came back and they said, no, it's still your name. He says, no, no, I saw that the name's been changed. They came and they told him, no, 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 it's still your name. 
he goes back to sleep the same, you know, the second night, and then he sees the same dream. An angel coming down, taking that, that, that sign, you know, taking his name out, uh, erasing it, and putting the name of some woman. The guy wakes up again, very, very annoyed. Has anybody changed my name? Go back and check. They went, they checked, they came back and says, no, your name is still there. It has not been changed. The third day, he has the same dream. The same dream. By now, he has memorized the name of this woman. The third day, he says, call, go bring me the name of this woman. I want to see this woman. This angel coming down, changing my name and putting her name. Go get me this woman. It was an old woman. They looked for her. They found her. An old woman, mesquina, like poor. She comes in. He says, what did you do? She says, I did not do anything. What did you do? No, no, you must have done something. She says, well, I'm a poor woman. What would I do? I asked nobody to pitch in. I don't want nobody to contribute to build this mosque. What did you do? I know you said that. I didn't do it. I'm a poor woman anyways. I cannot pay. I cannot do anything. He says, no, you must have done something. Because this name has changed. My name has changed. Angels coming down to put your name as the name of this masjid. You must have done something. She says, I'm a poor woman. The only thing I have done. Look. DSS. The only thing she has done was she was walking by. And she saw these camels, you know, these uh, mules, the mules that they used to do to carry sand and to carry water to help build the masjid, to help build the mosque. And they, and these cam and these mules, they were, you know, leached. You know, there was a leech and they were standing by outside of the masjid and one of them was thirsty. She was trying to get some water because there was a bucket of water next to it, you know, next to that mule. And this, and this mule was trying to move her head and get close to that water. She was trying to drink and she couldn't. And this old woman, she saw her trying to get close to that, to that bucket. And then what did she do? She says, I only took the bucket of water and I gave it, put it close to her so that that mule drank from it. That's all she did. She says... You did that for the sake of Allah. I wanted to build this mosque, not for the sake of Allah. But you did it for the sake of Allah. And he changed that name of the masjid after her name. Because of this little, you know, trivial thing that she has done for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. My brothers and sisters, would you believe? Would you believe that a prostitute, a prostitute with all due respect, a woman from the children of Israel, the children of Israel, she was forgiven and entered Jannah because she watered a dog. She watered for the dog. A dog, a woman, an old woman, she comes in, you know, she goes into this well. She drinks from the well. She comes up from the well and then she found because her clothes were wet and then she was walking and her clothes were dripping water and this dog who was thirsty was going and trying to drink from that water because he was really thirsty so he was eating the dust. She saw the dog being thirsty. She went down into that well and then she took her shoes. She took her shoes, she filled them with water, and then she went up the well, and she watered the dog. Our prophet says, Allah forgave her and made her enter Jannah. She watered a dog. She did not water a human being. There are people today who are opposing, you know, this, this, the people today who are dying off of thirst in Gaza, in Palestine, because they could not get clean water clean water why the clean water because the muslims were living next door they put uh, uh 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 you know they did not let the water go through they put some some restrictions or whatnot there are people only they want water this woman allah forgave her the made her enter jannah because she watered a dog all i'm trying to say is what have you done for Islam lately? What have you done for your religion lately? By Allah, Allah will ask you. What have you done? Should you say, oh Allah, I prayed? The praying is for you. But what have you done for Islam? 